Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am doing a Q&A as promised and this is going to be a more personal Q&A. I actually did a practice run through of this last night and I realized that there are so many questions so I'm going to split both personal and style Q&As into two parts so you get a couple of extra videos in the next month so I hope you guys enjoy that but I'm just going to jump right into the questions on um, before I do I wanted to say thank you so much to every single one of you who left me a question it's been really fun reading through them and also for your really kind comments you guys have said some really sweet things and it just means so much to me okay so starting with the questions I'm just going to be looking down because I've got them here on my computer um, so Sky asks I'm in Cyprus and was shocked to hear you one day mention yeah yeah are you Greek Yes, I am Greek. I'm Greek on my mother's side, so I kind of grew up within that whole culture. I went to Greek school between three and five days a week, depending on what after school activities that I had. And then I also did Greek dancing on Saturdays. Um, I do speak Greek, in case you guys were wondering. My grandparents don't necessarily have the best English skills, so it definitely helps when I'm trying to communicate with them, as I do talk to them every single week. Wendy asks, how old am I? I'm 28. I just recently turned 28 in February. And if you're wondering what my star sign is, I'm an Aquarius. May asks, tell us about your husband. How did you meet? I'd love to see more vlogs and maybe a couple's tag. Um, so Luke's my fiance, for those of you who don't know already. We actually worked in the same building, kind of. So that was how we met. I'd gone to his office to catch up for a coffee with one of his colleagues and then after that I saw him you know in one of the hallways at work so I waved and said hi and he had thought I was checking him out but actually I had a boyfriend at the time but he started to get in touch with me and he pursued me for about six months and in the end we ended up getting together and now we're getting married so yeah I guess it was one of those things that was just meant to be I did ask him about a couples tag and he's not really the type that likes to be in front of the camera he prefers to be behind it you may see him because I am planning on doing some vlogs when we go to Italy and to America in June, July. So you may get to see a little bit of him then. But yeah, so at this stage, probably a no for the couple's tag, but we'll see how we go. I'm going to completely butcher this username, but Ptathesis um, <laughs> asks, can I please tell the story of how we got engaged and what was the reason for selling my Celine? So in case you guys didn't know, I recently sold my Celine Trio. I had some issues with it and after talking to a few other girls, I know that there can be some issues with the bag, like the handle, the um, strap snapping off and also getting holes in pouches. And to me, it just seemed like a lot of maintenance and I prefer to have bags that are really hard wearing. So the bag that I have kept throughout all of this has been my Prenza Schooler PS11 just because it is so hard wearing. I have dropped it a few times like when I've been running away from bees and it's just withstood everything and that's really something that I look for in a bag. Also I am saving for my wedding so I'm kind of been trying to you know get rid of things that I don't necessarily need or use that often. And when we got engaged, um, I'd actually been happy, so it was about a year ago now, it was in February last year, and I was having a really awful week, and Luke had been calling me all day, and I kind of felt like something was up, but I wasn't sure what it was, and when I went home, he was already there, and he'd started cooking, and there were flower petals everywhere, and candles lit, and I just thought that he was treating me because I'd had such an awful week, but... <laughs> Um, it turns out I was completely wrong. So um, he cooked the entire three course meal for us, which he had styled on the very first meal that we had on our first date. And then after dinner, he you know, got down on one knee and he said some really beautiful things and asked me to marry him. And it was a really emotional experience for me because I wasn't expecting it. And obviously I said yes. And yeah, really, really excited as our wedding is coming up in October. GL asks, have I chosen my wedding dress yet? And if so, what is the style? So yes, I have chosen my wedding dress. I've actually got two. Um, just because the dress that I'm going to be wearing for the ceremony is really delicate and I don't want to ruin it So I've got a second one for dancing in but my main dress is from one of my favorite designers So if you guys have been following my blog or been watching my videos for a long time You probably already guess it's an Australian designer um, And it is a beautiful French lace. It's got a high-low hemline and it's quite fitted so that's about as much as I'm kind of willing to give away, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to wearing it as it's a lot different to what I usually would wear, but I think it's gonna look really nice. 
Sarah asks, if I was to have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? And I really like this question. I think it's really interesting. It can be quite telling about a person. I have to say, um, you know, if I could, I would love to have dinner with my mum one last time. Um, I think it's one of those things that you really take for granted. But yeah, um, that's the one person, you know, if I could only have one person, that would be it. If we're talking more about people who are well known, then I would have to say Steve Jobs because I think that he was a visionary, he was incredibly focused, driven, he was passionate and he, the things that he was kind of trying to do were really game changing and I really admire that in a person. I know he wasn't necessarily the best type of person to be around, I have read his autobiography, but I just think that he was quite inspiring in what he did and what he was able to achieve. A lot of you have asked me what I do for work and I think Amy put it really nicely. She says, what do you do or more generally, what field do you work in? Is this what you wanted to do or what are your career goals long term? So I work in comms or as a publicist in the television industry, it's a job that I love. I feel so grateful to be working where I'm working and to have the job that I have. I love it. So I feel very lucky in that respect. In terms of my career goals, this was definitely the type of work that I wanted to get into. So communications or corporate communications. And it's one of those things that I've been working towards for a really, really long time. So it definitely goes to show that perseverance does pay off and eventually you will get where you want to. In terms of my background, in case you are curious, I started university with a double degree. So a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in Accounting and Economics and also a BA majoring in Political Science and International relations. I decided to pursue only the BA majoring in political science and international relations as that was what I was truly passionate about and I had dreams of grandeur of working for the United Nations or working with international aid organizations. I just thought it would be really incredible and also one of those types of jobs that's also really quite rewarding and I think if the opportunity ever came up in the future I would probably jump at it as I do think you know it's one of those things that I've always been and felt quite passionate about but yeah and then after that I actually did postgrad studies as well in marketing so I'd really love to build up my skill set and get a bit of experience in marketing as well as I do think it's quite important from a communications perspective so following on from this sort of a theme Lou asks I'm curious about what your plans are for the channel can you see yourself becoming a full-time youtuber with a completely self-directed career so while I think freelance life looks and sounds really wonderful, I'm not sure if it's necessarily for me. At this stage, I'm trying to do six videos a month and I'm able to do that. I, I mean, it does take up a lot of my free time, but I enjoy doing it and I honestly have no idea what I'd do with my free time if I wasn't doing YouTube and my blog. But at the moment, it's something that I feel like I can manage while working full time and my job is not something that I want to give up. As I said before, I really, really love it and it's something that I want to continue to do. So I've got no plans to stop doing YouTube or stop doing my blog anytime soon, but I really don't want to give up what I'm doing in my career just to pursue this solely. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. And then the last question that I'm going to answer for this first part is, I think this is from someone who might be looking to start YouTube. Georgiana asks, how much money do you make out of YouTube and what about from your blog and how did you reach 10k subscribers? So I did say ask me anything, although I have to say I do think it's a little bit like asking someone what their salary is, you know, it's not really something that most people are willing to share. Um, in terms of maybe the proportion of how much I earn from YouTube and my blog, it's a very, very small sum of my yearly salary. I do make a small amount from the ads that we will see on YouTube and if you want to learn a little bit more about how that works, I can pop a couple links down below. And then I do occasionally earn a small commission based on sales from the affiliate links that you might see down below and also on my blog. Um, in terms of reaching 10,000 subscribers, this I think, I actually really don't know how it happened. I have to say I'm really kind of shocked and surprised that so many people wanted to even subscribe to my channel. I feel like it was very organic. I did one collaboration and that was with um, a couple of other capsule wardrobe YouTubers and that was at Christmas time when I think I was probably around the seven to 8,000 mark, but yeah, it's just been a really organic growth. 
So those are all the questions for part one. So stay tuned a little bit later this week and I'm going to post part two of this more personal Q&A. Thank you guys so much for watching, for asking me your questions and I hope that you're enjoying getting a little bit more insight into who I am. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.